Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now today's video is very special for a number of reasons. First and foremost, brand new company on the channel, which is awesome. Second is innovative tool that is so incredible. In my mind, this has next level thinking written all over it. And I don't know if it was all 100% intentional by the designer. It might have been. He'll weigh in in the comments. But if everything that went into this is as thought through as it is, it is literally next level. I love this. This tool is literally a masterpiece. But with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. Now, before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much to Don Moore Kramer from Carnivora, who did provide this for review. Now, if you don't know who Carnivora is, do me a favor. I had a great chance to catch up with Don at Blade Show 2022 down in Atlanta. We talked about Carnivora at length, so if you want to know more about the brand, do me a favor and check out one of my prior videos. But this here, this Sabretooth, okay, this is version 1.0. Carnivora currently is creating a version 2. They've started to put out some releases showing what they're going to do here. I have developed a pretty comprehensive thought on this, and this is a crazy wild yet insanely effective tool it is definitely different but once you understand it and you can harness the different handle grips and the different blade shapes and the different ability to get to work it's like next level you wouldn't think it looking at this this is a carving and fine whittling just it's a phenomenal tool for that purpose doesn't look it definitely is and for the harder tasks, some chopping and some splitting, very, very good. Now, Carnivora also going to say there are some fundamental issues with this in their opinion that they're trying to make for a safer tool. Like, for example, the fact that this little tooth here definitely goes back and sweeps back towards your hands. Now, I didn't have any problems with it. However, if you use your imagination, you can see how that might get you. And one time it didn't get me but i did sweep my hand along the back side of this and i definitely felt that point i'm you know specifically not on the leading edge but even being on that back edge there it is definitely potential cause for concern so they are aware of that they're making that change that is part of this but it's just a badass design insane and so i did put this to some good field use getting this out in the field for some pretty basic firecraft tasks i really want to know is this kind of that one tool option or is it just something that looks like it belongs in a video game and so now getting the carnivora saber tooth out for some good quality field use now you heard me question whether or not this was meant to be in a video game well if you know Carnivora or you've been following along, Don Moore Kramer, a video game designer. Now, this particular project does take what would otherwise look like it belongs in a video game and in practice turns them into good quality field tools. And that's exactly what you have here with the Sabretooth. So taking the graphical inspiration of sort of a fantastical design and now turning it into something that is functional and practical. So getting the saber tooth into some good hard field use. Now, if you've been watching my channel, you know I typically go to the outdoor wilderness and firecraft tasks. So here using the saber tooth for that purpose. Now, right away, I have to say I don't often get intimidated by blades, but this has me intimidated. The overall shape, the size, the intended use for what I'm trying to do just had me a bit nervous, but settling into things here, getting a feel for it, understanding the overall geometry and what this can do, this saber tooth is insane. Absolutely phenomenal for a number of reasons. So of course here, using it for the chopping, using it for the batoning, using it for the splitting tasks, this is going to stress any tool, but the saber tooth absolutely performing phenomenally great at splitting it takes a little bit you don't have a ton in the way of handle length 
So you do kind of need to be very specific with your chops and your hand does that sometimes end up a little bit in the way if you're not careful, but really cool. And a couple little things worth noting that I think we should work out with Don. For example, on the little edge of the back side of the handle here, it is definitely wearing on my pinky. So a little bit of a hot spot there, something that moving into version 2.0 can certainly be worked out. And the other thing that Don has already discussed, the proximity of the actual saber tooth to your hand itself. That also going to be worked out. But overall, settling into this, using it for the chopping tasks, very effective. And unfortunately for me, after a while, it just was really wearing on my pinky to the point where I literally wore through the skin and it was causing damage. And you can see again, that little bit of a beak on the backside, just a little bit sharp. That definitely wore my hands after a while, but something very easy to work out. So not only is the saber tooth an incredibly effective chopper, but really where this starts to just blow my mind is on the quality of the carving. This edge is literally perfect. The geometry, perfect. The heat treat, perfect. I'm almost, and I'm not going to say mirror polish, it's somewhere in a satin range, but just so well done. This is a full convex grind all the way down to a zeroed out convex edge. So no secondary bevel, and it is phenomenally sharp. And not only is it phenomenally sharp, it's incredibly controllable. So you can see here, just carving down the wood, getting these nice, fine and refined curls. No problem. This thing just performs for the carving tasks. And you have a number of different grips with this handle, which is really cool. You would almost think that for these carving tasks, a tool like this might be just a little bit awkward. It's really not. In fact, it's so comfortable and it's so controlled. I really do like it. And working in different parts of the handle with different grips, you can almost hold it the exact same way you'd hold your knife and it just performs. The saber tooth is magnificent. I love it. I love the handle shape. I love the ergonomics and coupled with the quality of the craftsmanship, the crown spine on the back of a full tang handle, the contours on the micarta, the ability to index and just working on this wood, extremely controlled. So here you can see using this more like a traditional slicing method, it's just awesome. It works extremely well. And again, you would think this would not be the most controlled, the opposite. It's extremely controllable. It's extremely easy to find the edge and just everything from hogging through the wood, taking significant chunks to really just getting some fine carving. You can see lightening up completely, taking extremely fine little pieces. I, again, I can find this edge literally perfectly better than many knives and it just sings. Look how sharp I am able to get this little vampire steak here. Like no problem, incredibly, incredibly fine and sharp. The detail on this, just awesome. So the saber tooth edge is among the best, among the best of really any tools I have used. And the only thing again to consider, just be very mindful of your hand placement, especially if you get a version one. But moving forward with more of those alternate bushcraft tasks, what about some additional splitting? Well, you can do it. Again, the handle's gonna be just a little bit short. You do need to be just kind of careful. And especially with the exact geometry of the version one, I'm just being very mindful. But between the splitting capability, the batoning capability, the full tang design, the brute strength of this tool, the thickness of the spine, the incredible heat treat, the 5160 spring steel, which I am a big fan. That's another thing worth mentioning, the construction of this. So the micarta is awesome. The fluted pins, awesome. And that 5160 spring steel, again, I am a big fan. 
I don't care what steel you put on a tool as long as it is treated well. And the heat treat on this is really hard to beat. I don't know if you actually could beat it. So after all of this good quality, hard use, some finer use, getting all of my wood processed for my fire prep, just awesome. Again, this saber tooth is magnificent. Looking at the details, the brute to forge, that awesome edge, the excellent attention to detail, that wicked saber tooth, this thing is just insane. I love the pins, I love the maker's mark. Every single thing about this just screams awesome. So from fantastical to practical, Dawn Man, you absolutely nailed it. And Shade, you are amazing at what you do. Now turning the corner, I do like to process some fat wood for a couple reasons. Of course, it makes it easy to get my fire started. But second of all, inferior tools and inferior edge geometry just really struggles with fat wood but here you can see the saber tooth just perfect again no problems with the edge no problems with the edge geometry and the overall quality just really getting to some good work on this fat wood so here getting some thicker curls what about the fluff well i always like to have a little sharpened portion of a spine so that i can get down and really get some fluff generated. That's the easiest way to get my fire started in a tool like this. If it's going to be not just a fantastical tool, but a practical tool and a one tool option needs to have the ability to scrape. Now this can do it. I would urge, I guess, Dawn at this point to maybe sharpen up on the top of that spine just a little bit, square it off a little bit to give you the additional ability to scrape with a little more uh, just ease. But generally speaking, this can do it. And you can see here, just lightening up using the blade and getting some fine little pieces. Again, processing down, no problem. The handle positions, no problem. Using it comfortably, no problem. Just finding the edge, no problem. This is an incredible tool. And the entire blade just super sharp, great attention to detail. And something I can say, I am just a huge, huge fan. So for anybody, again, who can get your hands on one of these, I would strongly, strongly suggest it. But moving forward here, processing down on my ferro rod, getting a little magnesium, and then at this point needing to strike that ferro rod. There's no real good squared off section of this tool. So again, urging Dawn to look at that, get the top of the spine right up on top, squared off so that you can use some alternate grips and really do some of these scraping and striking tasks but you can see, uh, unfortunately, I did bust my ferro rod. Not a big deal. Moving forward with the testing, trying to find a spot on this blade. It could either use a dedicated notch, but here you can see ripping on the bottom of the blade, using that saber tooth to rip that. No problem. Landing my spark right on my sort of fuzz pile and getting this thing started. So the saber tooth, capable of doing all this work, processing down from my fire with ease. I didn't have any issues whatsoever. And I do have to say, I absolutely love this tool. So if you've heard anything from me today, you know I'm saying, yeah, this is not only fantastical looking, but extremely practical, fits well in the hands, performs phenomenally. I absolutely love it. And just finishing up while I'm getting my fire started, some last little pieces of wood here, trying to get everything fired up and really up and running well at this point doing a nice job fitting great in my hand and my work tough stove here ready for some action this evening so all in all great job Don Moore Kramer Carnivora Tools Shade of Indonesia the fit the finish the overall quality the craftsmanship but the design the overall inspiration the vision bringing something that looks like it didn't necessarily belong being a practical tool into some good use, I am absolutely blown away and extremely impressed. Now, what about some alternate uses? Not just the fire prep. Can this work for other slicing capabilities? Getting on some rope here. This is tough rope. This here is what's used for lobster traps. So it's used to being in harsh conditions and it's sturdy enough to survive in those elements. Now you'll see I'm just kind of feeling it out, trying to get on the edge. Because of the depth of the overall tool, you'll notice it is easier if you make a loop and get it around simply the blade portion. You do need to kind of pay attention and translate all your effort 
focused forward and into a quality slicing motion on the rope. But when you do it and you get the right angle, boom, right through it. Quality slicing action again. Being that full convex zero ground edge, this is going to be a wonderful, wonderful slicer. And there are some interesting things about this when you really look at it. First off, this was designed to be somewhat used as an ulu. So you can see here, bearing down, using a little rocking motion, the sweep and belly of the saber tooth is phenomenal. It allows you to do some of those rocking tasks. And you'll see I've done sort of these rocking tasks a couple different ways, but leveraging it here now as a draw knife, that's the other thing I love about this. It almost, almost has a pronounced tip to where you can literally use this like you would any other knife, almost like a utility knife down on the cutting surface. Now, I would say to Dawn, again, maybe sharpen up just a little bit on that tip so that it's not quite so broad right on that tip. And if we sharpened up on that a little bit, man, would this really sing for some of these sort of utility-based tasks. It's incredible what you can do with this when you put your imagination to using the different blade shapes, the different parts of the blade very effectively. But again, looking at this tip, if it was just sharpened up a little bit and not left broad, I think that would aid in the ability to do some of this a little bit easier, but it can do it and it can do it very well. And after all this hard use, let's check the edge. Is it still sharp? Well, again, very well done by Shade. The heat treat, phenomenal. This 5160 really performing. And you can see here a couple little snags, but that's mostly on me. This is still able to make it down and through the paper easily. Very sharp and just awesome. Again, the saber tooth, an amazing tool for all of these wilderness tasks. I really like it. I think it's an incredible piece of kit and something that I could say I would absolutely trust my life on. Getting it back into its beautiful sheath here, rocking it on my belt, ready to move forward. Again, Don Moore Kramer, Shade Industries, Carnivora, wonderful. Very well done. I am extremely, extremely impressed. And so turning the corner here to some basic food prep, you can see using the saber tooth very effectively in the kitchen. Now, of course, this is gonna be a little bit overbuilt, a little bit larger than you would technically need, but I do always say that for me, with all my best knives and tools, if it's going to be that sort of one tool option, a camp tool, something that you're gonna use as your primary blade, it absolutely has to do the food prep. And in this case, it's actually doing a really nice job. This is a slightly Ulu inspired design and that is something that is very effective in the kitchen. So you can see here using this on chicken, using it on vegetables, again, very effectively. Now there's no true sort of pronounced tip to really use for some more finer tasks. I think you'd struggle with certain tasks. However, generally speaking for any of the chopping and harder use for the food prep, this can definitely do it in very comfortable, very controlled, and actually all the same great characteristics that I found while I used this for the fire prep. So getting to some good use here, you can see getting to a number of different vegetables, getting to a bunch of different sort of kitchen aspects, really, really cool. And again, the 5160 doing a nice job, really getting down and through each one of these different sort of mediums, really easy. So whether, you know, the softer chicken and then into that cucumber and slightly harder on the carrots and chopping here on the bacon. Absolutely awesome, doing a great job. And I definitely wanted to have a little bit of fun and see how far I could go with this concept. So here you can see, getting on a tomato, can I get those super fine refined slices? Well, no, unfortunately, not those paper thin slices. The blade thickness is definitely gonna get you, but the edge is definitely sharp enough to do some real fine work. And you can see here, it's actually slicing through this really soft and overly ripe tomato very easily. So the saber tooth edge, really, really sharp. And you can see here just a little bit further getting into these strawberries. I'm trying to find myself a good safe grip to leverage this for some of these alternate tasks. Not that this is gonna be anything comparable to a paring knife, but I definitely wanna be able to do that work. So here again, getting on these strawberries and you can see real clean cuts. No problem getting the tops off of these with ease. 
and just getting down and through this. So generally speaking for the food prep, not too bad. A number of different things that you can use this for. Generally speaking, does this offer all the qualities you need out of a one tool option and a general camp tool? It does. So again, not just from the fire prep, but again, to those food prep tasks, the Sabretooth, very impressive, very nicely done, and an awesome job in design by Don Moore Kramer. And so now back in the studio, the Sabretooth does require just a little bit of further explanation. So as we take a look here and weighing this up, well, you can see weighing in at two pounds, 0 0.5 ounces. So a nice size blade, a little bit of heft, but not overly weighted. It's kind of in that middle range where it strikes the balance between a chopper and something that's gonna be wieldy and nimble enough to kind of wield it around without too much fatigue. Now add on top of that the sheath, total package weight of two pounds, 5.8 ounces. Now, as we go through this here, I do wanna give you some measurements. So here the total overall length, if you look just roughly about 10 and a half inches, the overall width here you can see is roughly about six inches. The cutting edge here from the top all the way down to the bottom of that tooth, you're looking at roughly seven and three eighths inches. Now you do have a blade depth from the handle to the edge of that cutting edge, roughly about four inches. Total handle length here, just a little over eight and a quarter inches. Now the thickness of the stock, 0.31 inches again very beefy and stout yet again going back to my statements the grind is literally perfect it's unbelievable how perfect that grind is and the entire thing again being a convex edge down to that zero grind just wicked and the sheath just beautifully made, nicely welted, gorgeous leather, nice and thick. And these straps with the brass buttons, just really nicely done. Now, I do struggle just a tiny bit and a tiny bit getting this in and out safely, but you just need to take your time and go careful. It's kind of like set it in and then you kind of work your way through the backside here, keeping your hands out of the way of that big massive blade and then it's all set so once it's in place no problem and then you can just sort of snap everything down and this can live on your belt nicely which is awesome so it works out pretty well it's just you need to be a little bit careful and i've said it already and i really do mean it i am not often intimidated by blades and just this is such an intimidating tool it is phenomenal just badass and in the words of choir boy cutlery badassery son this thing is just awesome so all right guys there you have it a look at the saber tooth from carnivora tools absolutely awesome designed by don moore kramer manufactured by shade of indonesia so so awesome there are so many great things i can say about this tool really really incredible the vision the inspiration to make something different the fact that you could take something that was really sort of designed for that video game aesthetic and turn it into a fully functional and really superior tool in many ways this is just a joy of a tool extremely extremely well performing and just thinking outside the box i love this so in my opinion this really is sort of a one tool option now is it going to struggle in areas of course but it excels at a lot and in a lot of different ways i love this i love the vision i love the creativity the quality is really very very good i mean almost second to none there's a lot of great manufacturers out there and shade is right up there just premium fit and finish premium grind angle extremely keen edge and the heat treat is so spot on this tool is phenomenal now are there some little deficiencies remember this is version one Don Moore Kramer and Carnivora moving forward with version two. 
beyond that, I have what I would call my outer limitless dream list of sort of modifications. And the problem is it would fundamentally change some of the aspects of this tool. I have ideas in mind, things that if for me, I really did want this to be that literal one tool option, survival tool that could really cover a huge wide range of different sort of genres, there are some things that I would personally modify. And I plan on talking to Don about that. And who knows, maybe there would be not really the saber tooth, but an iteration of it that kind of strikes that balance. So I'm going to talk to Don about that and see what he thinks. But again, these are going to be extremely limited. Anytime these come out, they're going to be extremely limited. And especially when they're under the Carnivora name, very specific sort of custom versions. But the key with Carnivora trying to move more towards production, teaming up with other production companies, I would love to see this under another brand name as a production model. This is worthy of it. So all things considered, Don, fantastic job, amazing imagination, amazing creativity, turning that imagination to a fully functional tool. So again, from fantastical to practical, this is an absolutely incredible tool. So guys, if you have a chance to get your hands on a saber tooth, I don't care what generation it is, even if it's the version one, it's just an awesome, awesome piece. So from firecraft to food prep, and I'm sure you could certainly use this for self-defense or zombie warfare, from video games to reality, the saber tooth absolutely awesome. And so again, thank you very much to Don Moore Kramer. And for the rest of you, if you guys like this content, do me a favor, take a look at my Outer Limitless 2 channel, which is more on the tactical and firearm side of things. At this point, that channel is growing quickly. So if you like what you see here on Outer Limitless, do me a favor and check me out on Outer Limitless 2. So all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.